This week I thought I would show you guys what we eat in a typical week and hopefully this will help inspire you guys if you are in a dinner rut. I know I like these type of videos. Tonight I decided to make some fried chicken with some mashed potatoes using red skin potatoes and some corn and I also made some rolls for the side. I'm using one pound of chicken and I usually cut it into four strips so I'll take each breast and cut it into four strips and that way we get eight pieces of chicken. We like ours in thinner strips and it makes so that you're not trying to fry one huge piece of chicken. After I cut my chicken strips then I add some lard to my cast iron pan and I used about half a cup of lard to fry in. You don't really need that much and it's going to be so full of batter that it's going to be thrown out at the end. So try to use as little oil as possible that way you're not wasting as much. For my batter mixture, I used three quarter cups of flour, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then one teaspoon of salt. And you're just going to mix that up really well. And then in a separate bowl, I cracked three eggs and beat them until they are well combined. Throughout this video, I try to show everything that I'm doing, but on some nights I was in a bit of a rush and it was taking too long to try and film it. So on this night, I did not get to film the mashed potatoes or the rolls being made. So eventually I will have all those recipes up on my blog. The mashed potatoes and the chicken are already up on my blog and throughout the next week I will work on getting the rest of these recipes up but I'll have them all linked down below for you guys as they come out. This is some of our garden corn that I canned from last year. It is honey select corn and it is a superior corn. It is so good. We absolutely love it. It's our favorite type of corn. If you've never tried it you really need to grow some and try it. Dip the chicken in the egg wash and this is just going to act as a binder to help hold the flour on to the chicken and you can totally double dip if you want a thicker batter. So as soon as you get done flouring it, then instead of putting it in the cast iron skillet, you'll put it back in the egg wash and then back in the flour and then in the skillet. But only do that if you want like a really, really thick crust of batter on the outside. We really don't like that much batter. So... I just dip mine once and then put it directly in the skillet and let it cook on each side for about five to seven minutes and it should be done. But you can check it with a meat thermometer if you're not sure. The next night I started by adding some minced garlic to a cast iron skillet. Through this week we were really running low on groceries so we had meat and stuff but a lot of the stuff for ingredients we were out of. So a lot of our fresh ingredients we were out of. So I'm using minced garlic here and this was just a pound of hamburger. I'm just browning that up and then adding in some onion. And on this night, I really wanted to make manwich, like homemade manwich, but I realized that we were out of the ingredients for it. So I switched gears and I was gonna use this elbow pasta but I ended up switching gears again and going with a complete different pasta and just keeping it simple and making pretty much spaghetti, but with a cheese top and a different type of noodle. These are just, I think they were ZD noodles, but I just poured in some of our homemade sauce. I got that mixed in and then I added half of this bag of noodles. I think that would be eight ounces because it was a pound. So I used eight ounces of noodles. We like our pasta like this. To have less noodles and more meat but if you want more pasta in yours you can always add the entire pound of the pasta but you'll need to add either more sauce or you can add some kind of heavy cream or water whatever you want to add to the pasta because it will need more to cook in so I'm gonna dump these in and then push the noodles down just so that none of them are sticking up and they can all cook and I'm gonna add the lid on and let it simmer for probably about 15 to 20 minutes before I put the lid on, I did add half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper, but all of these recipes will be over on my blog and there you can get the printable in case I forget to mention an ingredient. On this night, instead of doing a garlic bread, I decided to do a cheddar biscuit and these are just like a drop cheddar biscuit. They're super easy. You don't have to roll them out or anything like that. But all I did was essentially make my basic biscuit recipe and instead of just adding the butter and cutting it in I did grate that and the cheese and mix up your dry ingredients in a bowl first whisk those together 
and then add in your butter and your cheese and then toss the butter and the cheese in the flour mixture. And you can use any biscuit recipe for this and just add some garlic and some parsley and some buttermilk. As long as it's a buttermilk recipe, I'm not sure how non-buttermilk biscuits would taste with this, but I am using buttermilk and butter in this recipe, so it makes them really good. I baked mine at 500 degrees for 10 minutes, but if you want to turn your biscuit recipe into cheddar biscuits, all I added was one and a half cups of cheddar cheese and then one teaspoon of garlic powder and two tablespoons of parsley. Next time I probably would add a little bit more garlic powder, but like I said, the exact measurements and the exact recipe for these drop cheddar biscuits will be up on my blog soon, so you can get that printable soon. When making these, you do want to make sure that you grease your cast iron skillet or whatever you're putting them in. I just use butter and it just helps prevent the biscuits from sticking because the cheese does want to stick to the cast iron or whatever whenever it bakes. After I was finished making the biscuits, then the pasta was done simmering and the noodles were fully cooked. So I grated some mozzarella cheese and put that on top. And then I put it in the oven and just broiled it for probably five minutes just because my oven wasn't that hot yet but just keep an eye on it whenever you broil anything it happens so quick so just keep an eye on it whenever you do broil it but you just want that cheese to get nice and bubbly i didn't get a picture of it on our plates so here it is these are going to be pictures for the blog tonight i had spent all evening in our garden trying to get everything ready for that and i had not prepared anything for dinner so i ran in probably about two hours ago and fed the sourdough starter it was not active and bubbly yet so we were just making do but I did end up making sourdough pancakes and some sausage with this even though my sourdough starter had really not taken off yet but that's okay because we do add baking soda so you can use it with discard or an active starter it doesn't really matter but that recipe is already up on my blog and then I just kept it simple with some sausage but I did not get pictures this night, but we just had pancakes and a sausage. Tonight I started by putting some oil in a cast iron skillet and then I filled up our well pot with water so that I could get some noodles boiling. And once that skillet got really hot, I put some butterfly chicken in there. I just cut it lengthways in half so that they were thinner pieces. Again, I used about a pound of chicken here. And I'm just wanting to get them seared on each side, so I probably let them cook for maybe four or five minutes on each side and I just sprinkled quite a bit of paprika, some seasoning salt, and oregano. I did not measure but I will try and put some measurements on the blog for you guys but I just sprinkle, I just measure with my heart here. I just go by looks. I would say probably a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of each seasoning was used but we are going to be adding more later on to our sauce so I really wouldn't worry about it too much just Put however much you want on your chicken and then after it is seared on both sides then I remove it and set it aside on a plate and in that skillet after you remove the chicken don't clean it or anything you want those seasonings and the oil to still stay in there it is gonna help add a lot of flavor and I just add in some garlic again I'm using minced garlic I just don't have any fresh garlic on hand but you can use fresh garlic if you want to I used probably two tablespoons. It is a lot of garlic, but I promise it turns out good. Just stick with me here. So just get that starting to brown in there and just cook up. You're wanting all that flavor to come out of the garlic. And I added probably about a medium sized chopped onion. I just used frozen onions as what I had on hand. And then I added one teaspoon of seasoning salt, one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper and one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. Then I added some of these cherry tomatoes that were canned in Italian seasoning last year from our garden and it came out to be about two cups so if you're using fresh cherry tomatoes use about two cups. You can use diced tomatoes whatever you have on hand and then I put in probably about three cups of spinach. It sounds like a lot but I promise it cooks down to pretty much nothing so just give it time and let it cook down. It turns out, I promise. So add the lid on and let it simmer. And then while that is cooking, let whatever pasta you want to use be boiling. I'm using bow tie pasta and 
since I'm using our well pot, I do have to shake it every once in a while. After that, you are gonna add your chicken back in on top of your sauce and put the lid on and just let it finish cooking that way because essentially it's just seared it on each side. It's not fully done on the inside. So we're just gonna put the lid on and let it finish cooking in that sauce while it simmers. Let it simmer for probably about 10 minutes and then you're gonna serve it on top of your pasta. On this night, I wanted breakfast for dinner, but Ben said that he wanted a sausage pasta. So I know we ate a lot of pasta this week, but he said he wanted a sausage pasta. So now we are gonna make sausage pasta in the Instant Pot. This is an incredibly easy recipe if you have an Instant Pot. It requires little to no time actually doing it yourself. You just kind of set it and forget it. But you're gonna turn your saute function on and I turned mine on high. I really have no idea how the other instant pots are. I know everybody has said that mine is a little bit different. I have the Pro, I believe. I'll link it down below the one that I have. But I added in probably about a medium sized amount of diced onion, a tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic, and a pound of sausage. This is just a medium sausage we get from our butcher. I really don't know any other flavor. Italian sausage would be good in this but we just use a basic medium. And then I added a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of seasoning salt, a 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes, and you're just gonna stir that up and let everything incorporate. Next add in 32 ounces of sauce. Again, I'm just using our homemade sauce from last year that I canned and just mix that all up. And then you're gonna dump in a pound of pasta. You can use it whatever pasta you have we used i think this is penne pasta add in three quarters of a cup of water and then you're going to push your noodles down just so that they are fully submerged you want them to be under the liquid if you see your noodles sticking up depending on what kind you use then add a little bit more water or sauce just so it does not burn and then you're going to put your lid on switch it to the seal function and then you're going to put it on pressure cook on high for Mine was 10 minutes. It's one minute less than whatever your box of pasta says. So mine was 11 minutes or 12 minutes. So I just did mine on 10 minutes and then you're gonna let it pressure cook. And whenever it beeps, then you're gonna do the manual vent or manual release on it. Once it is done venting, this is how it should look. And it looks a little bit dry, but we're gonna add some more stuff. I added half a block of cream cheese, so four ounces. And then you're going to add one cup of heavy whipping cream. Stir that all up until it is well incorporated and the cream cheese is fully melted and then just salt and pepper to taste and it is ready to serve. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found this video helpful and hopefully you got some dinner ideas from it. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe.